at this very special reception and we are, as the German Embassy, extremely proud to host this tonight. Let me say something on the occasion of this reception. Some 1,700 years ago, to be precise, on the 11th of December in the year 321, the Roman Emperor Constantine issued an edict, and that edict stipulated that Jews can and should hold municipal offices in Cologne city administration, which at that time was a Roman city, of course. This edict by Constantine in 321 is considered to be the oldest evidence of the existence of Jewish communities on the territory of today's Germany. And it's the reason why we are celebrating 1,700 years of Jewish life in Germany this year. Every year, all over Germany, and also in German embassies and missions abroad, more than 1,000 events are taking place. Concerts, exhibitions, theater plays, and many other things. The aim of this celebration is to make Jewish life in Germany visible and to experience it, and hence to fight anti-Semitism. There's so much shared history to be discovered and to learn about. No matter if we look in the fields of literature, philosophy, music, art, sciences, medicine, or economics. The Jewish community always had a big contribution to cultural life in Germany. Only this year, the UNESCO attributed the title of World Heritage to the so-called Schum cities, Speyer, Worms, and Mainz, and the Jewish cultural life in these places dating back to the early Middle Ages. The history and fate of Germany and the Jewish people have been tied together for centuries, indeed. There were times in which our joint history was characterized by cooperation and tolerance, in which Judaism and Jewish culture could flourish and prosper. The history of Jews in Germany is one of emancipation and prosperity, but it is, of course, also one of humiliation exclusion, and disenfranchisement. Unforgotten is the harm that Jewish families over centuries suffered from. The darkest chapter of Jewish German history is, of course, the Shoah, which led to the special responsibility that Germany has today, standing up for human rights and human dignity everywhere and all the time. That is and remains our priority number one. We have proudly seen a great revival of Jewish life in Germany. Today it is diverse, multifaceted, vibrant, and very dynamic. We are proud to say that, and I am profoundly, profoundly grateful for this. That is why today we are celebrating the Feast of Support together with our colleagues of the Israeli Embassy in Ankara and of course with our guests and the Jewish community in Turkey. And we are very happy to see so many of you assembled here today in the Garden of the German Embassy. For everyone who is not that familiar with support, we also put an exhibition on the lower lawn on this tradition to give you an impression of its meaning and history. The support celebration is characterized by gratitude and joy, and gratitude is also what I want to express tonight here on this occasion. We are grateful to all Jews who have fundamentally shaped Germany, its culture, and society over the past 1,700 years. We are grateful to all Jews who make their daily contribution to Germany's society. And we are grateful for the deep friendship between Germany and Israel. Thank you again for joining us here tonight to celebrate this feast together. And thank you, dear Edith, and all your colleagues for the great cooperation that made tonight 
possible. Let me also extend a special thanks to our musicians who are with us tonight, Dalson Chantash and Mutlu Ishta, who will play during the course of this evening. So thank you again. And now I would like to give the floor to my dear colleague, Irit, from the Israeli Embassy. Thank you very much for your cooperation, for your attendance, and enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you. It is not a given. On one hand, we mark an impressive coexistence of peoples and a strong mutual cultural effect that can be detected in every aspect of life. On the other hand, the shadow of the Holocaust shaped these outstanding relations and twisted them in a manner that the greatest tragedy of the Jewish people took lead over hundreds and hundreds of years of glory sometimes underestimated and view, all, and view them all only through one prism. The richness of the Jewish-German mosaic turned into a very complex amalgam of love and darkness. Today, due to the initiative of the German government and my dear colleague Ambassador Schultz, we have a unique chance to appreciate the intense, long-lasting relations between the Jews who live in Germany throughout the ages and their hosts to fly over this complexity and watch the beauty of the communities living side by side and enriching each other. Jews live in today's territory of Germany at least from Roman period, as we have heard. But the evidence from this period is rather scarce. The years to come brought to light the developments and achievements of this community of immigrants coming from the Middle East, North Africa, and Western Europe, especially after the expulsion from Spain in the 16th century, who managed to flourish basically against all odds. According to modern research, the German Jews were always a very small, almost negligible, hated and rejected minority, something like 0.07% of the population um, even before the war. Yet, they had a huge impact on the society they lived in. They were embedded into the avant-garde in all fields of life, economy, science, medicine, law, art, and politics. Great talents, such as Albert Einstein, Sigmund Freud, Henry Heine, Hannah Arendt, to name just a few and really to make huge injustice to hundreds of others, who shaped today's civilization as we know it, came from this particular community, brought glory and fame not only to the Jewish people, but to Germany. They saw themselves as German citizens, and this is exactly what they were. The Jewish community of Germany was unique. They admired the society in which they were living and seek integration in it, not as a minority with defined borders of rights, but rather as an integral, integral organ of the nation. They made a significant effort to combine their Jewish and German identity, and for many years, they were heavily invested in achieving this. This success might look as an illusion, but at the time, it was glorious, as they believed in the ability to live in an open and multicultural society. Paradoxically, it's only after this dream was shattered to pieces, it became a reality. Nowadays, this long-standing wish of the Jews in Germany came true as the community is growing and flourishing while living in a true open society who pays respect not only to 1,700 years of Jewish existence within it, but who is making an extraordinary effort to integrate minorities of different kinds and shapes and who, as Ambassador just mentioned, have very special relations with Israel, the state of the Jewish nation. As some of you know, I studied archaeology, and therefore any historical event makes me think about the individual in it. Thus today, I was thinking about a person like me, like you, 1,700 years ago in Germany, a man or a woman living in the Roman Empire, who exactly today sat in their sukkah celebrated the end of the agricultural season in a faraway land, in the land of Israel in which they probably haven't ever visited. And they thought about their forefathers 
who are immigrants from Egypt, you might say refugees from Egypt, who dwell in their sukkah during the Exodus, thousands of years before that. So we are one living chain of memories and hopes. Today, as I had the honor to be a guest and host this, in this lovely sukkah, I would like to thank my friend Jürgen and his devoted staff in the German Embassy, as well as to my staff in the Israeli Embassy, mostly Ms. Esgi Alifu Paulu, for initiating and materializing this brilliant idea and for making us all mushkizim, which means guests, in the sukkah. We use this term only for people who are dwelling under the sukkah. As an Ashkenazi Jew, let me conclude by greeting you all with a small blessing in Yiddish, the language of Ashkenazi Jews, a strange mixture of Hebrew and Old German, who is, who is used, I, I would have said best to use, but not anymore, by Jews originated in Central and Eastern, by Jews originated in Central and Eastern Europe. Ich wünsche euch beide Chiontes a gift year und sein Medizin. I wish you a happy holiday, a good year, and be well. Eat by Amla, the Yibi Yil, the Levin. Böylesi bir ikinci kutlamayı da aynı Türkçe'de düzenleyerek tarih bilincimize bir anlam daha katan ve bizleri burada misafir eden Almanya Büyükelçisi'ne ve İsrail Büyük Elçisi'nin masajına yürekten teşekkür Almanya'daki 1700 yıllık Yahudi yaşamının kutlanması söz konusu olduğunda doğrusu kendimi bu bakımdan güncellemek adına 1541 Almanya ve Baltara Doğumlu tarihçi Rabbi David Gamzen 1592 yılında Prag'da ve İbranice basılan Sefer, Sefer Smaqlı'nın kitabına şöylesine bir göz atmak istedim. İttila ederim ki sayfaları çevirdikçe bu konuda hala ne kadar az bir şey bilindiğini hayret tabii ki I have to admit I have to admit as I turned the pages I was amazed at how little is still known on the subject tabii ki burada ayrıntıya girecek değil ama halen devam etmekte olan bu 1700 yıllık birlikte varoluş ve birlikte yaşam bu vesileyle hemen her yönüyle yeniden inceden inceye araştırmalı ve günümüz bilgileri çevresinde yeniden yorumlanarak dünya kamuoyuna mal edilmiştir. Bunca uzun bir mazi bu ilgiyi yorumlanarak dünya kamu oyuna mal edilmelidir. Bunca uzun bir mazi bu ilgiyi yorumlayarak dünya kamuoyuna mal edilmelidir. Ziyadesiyle hak eder diye kimi toplum bilimciler biz Yahudilerin çok güçlü bir tarih bilincine sahip olduğumuzu söyler. Bence de öyle. Gerçekten bir tür Yahudi tarihi yazılımı niteliğinde de olan kutsal medinler külliyatı bir yana bırakılsa bile tarih boyunca çoğunlukta din ilgini rabai kökenli yazarlarımızın oluşturduğu 
kronikler, bazı dinsel motifler ihtiva ediyorsa da birçok araştırmacıya kaynaklı den önemli tarihi olayların ipuçlarını ve kimi birçok araştırmacıya kaynaklı gelen önemli tarihi olayların ipuçlarını ve kimi ayrıntılarına tanıklı halde toplumların karşılıklı olarak birbirlerinin kültürlerine çeşitli alanlarda katkılarda bulunduğundan söz edilemez. Başkanın al ve alışkanlığı vardır. Oysa bana öyle geliyor ki burada sözü edilmesi gereken popüler kültür öğeleri geçişkinlere kaçınılmaz sonucu olarak katkıdan öte süreç içinde her iki kanat içinde giderek gelişip biçimlenen bir yaşam kültürünün oluşturduğu olsa gerektir. Bence buna dair epeyce ipucular ve Almanca konuşulan coğrafyalarda yaşayan Yahudilerin buralara gelirken bagajlarında taşıdıkları kendi semitik İbrani kültüründeki Aram, Fars ve Roma etkisini Avrupa'nın tam ortasındaki yeni yurtlarına ne ölçüde yansıttıkları yeni ülkenin kültürlerini de hangi boyutlarda özümseyip benimsedikleri üzerinde çalışmak konunun uzmanları için epeyce cazip bir alan olması. Eskinizler genel tanımlaması içindeki Yahudilerin bu coğrafyalarda ürettikleri ve halen kullana geldikleri kendilerine özgü dilleri gidişin Nobel Edebiyatı ödülüne kadar uzanan macerası nasıl göz ardı edilebilir? Kimi tarihçiler ve toplum bilimcilerin Yahudi aydınlanması olarak tanımladığı maskilim akımını kıvılcılandıran bu coğrafyadaki düşünce akımlarından başka ne olabilir? Çoğaltıp sizleri yormak istemem ama her iki toplum yaşamında bu etkileşmelerin izlerini sanatta, felsefede, ekonomide, siyasette ve özetle yaşamın hemen her alanında teşkil etmek hiç güç olmadığı gibi bana göre hiç de şaşırtıcı değil. Bu kutlamanın daveti bana ulaştığında bulunduğum yerde aklıma gelenler kısaca bu türden düşünceler. Bence iyi bir vesile oldu. Tekrar teşekkür ederim. Gördüğünüz gibi ben bir din adamıyım. Yarın Ankara sinagogumuzu ziyaret edecek ve orada da hepimiz için dua edecek. Şimdiklik sevgilerimi, saygılarımı ve iyi dilekleri ve lütfen kabul ediniz.